How many goblins could a goblin gob if a goblin could gob goblins? Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, will get you 10% off any order over $10 at Flipside Gaming. It'll also get you 10% off any orders of singles at Multizone. And it'll get you 10% off most products at Original Magic Art, with the exceptions of some paintings. If these fine sites don't have what you're looking for, you can also consider using my affiliate link when ordering from TCG Player. And if you'd like to join the generic goblin gang to support this channel, there's a link to my Patreon in the description below. Just a heads up, but Flipside Gaming is going to be giving away a Zendikar Rising set booster box. The contest will run from August 31st all the way to September 25th, 2020. The typical rules apply of one entry per household. You'll be entered for your chance to win when you use my promo code on an order of $10 or more, or if you send Flipside Gaming a stamped self-addressed envelope or postcard to the address found above. So good luck and have fun. Today's game is another multi-zone matchup that was filmed a little while ago. I'm still playing my Erebos deck at this point, and I keep Silence the Believers, Leech Ridden Swamp, Noxious Gearhulk, Thespian Stage, Magus of the Coffers, Withering Boon, and a Swamp. Joey is playing the Twins, Will and Rowan, keeping an Isercon Scepter, Jace Unraveler of Secrets, Tybalt the Fiendblooded, Mystical Tutor, Island, Command Tower, and Sahili Ray. New to the channel is Felix, playing his Ayula deck, keeping two Forests, Reliquary Tower, Panharmonicon, Kamal Summons, Dragon's Guard Bear, and Predatory Hunger. Miguel is playing the Angry Jellybean, Omnath, keeping a Gruel Signet, Acidic Slime, Birds of Paradise, Collingheart Expedition, Lanawar Elves, Forest, and Mountain. Miguel wins the die roll and starts us off. Miguel draws and plays a Forest. He pays one for Lanawar Elves, passing. I play a Tap Leech Ridden Swamp. Joey plays a Command Tower. Felix plays a Reliquary Tower, passing to Miguel. Miguel plays a Mountain and casts Gruel Signet. He then activates it and casts a Birds of Paradise, letting the one red dissipate and passes. I play a Swamp and cast an Ivory Tower. Joey plays an Island and casts Isochron Scepter. As it comes in, he gets to imprint a spell, and we see him exiling Mystical Tutor underneath it, passing. Felix plays a Forest and brings out a Eula. Miguel also plays a Forest and pays 5 mana for Acidic Slime. It enters and blows up Felix's forest, which is kind of rude. I gain 2 life on my upkeep because of my tower seeing my 6 cards in hand, and I then draw for turn. I play a Thespian stage as my land drop, passing. Joey draws for turn and pays 2 mana to activate his scepter, casting Mystical Tutor. He goes to his library to find a contentious plan and puts it on top of his library, passing. Felix plays a forest undeterred by Miguel, and pays one green to put Predatory Hunger on Ayula, passing. Miguel plays a Colony Heart Expedition in his main phase, and then casts Rampant Growth. He goes to find a basic, putting out a basic mountain tapped, which triggers the expedition, and he puts a counter on it. On my upkeep, I gain two more life from the Ivory Tower, and then draw for turn. I cast Soul Ring, and then play Black Sun Zenith, where X is two. This wipes the board, and I shuffle the Zenith back into my library. Joey draws, and casts the contentious plan he tutored for, drawing another card, and proliferating nothing. He then passes turn. Felix draws, and passes. Miguel draws, and casts a Reclamation Sage. It comes in, and blows up my Soul Ring, and he passes turn. I gain only one on my upkeep from the Ivory Tower, and draw a card. I then have nothing to do but pass my turn, because let's face it, who really plays lands for turn? Joey draws and plays an Intraplanar Beacon as his land drop. He casts Tybalt, gaining one life from the beacon, and then upticks the Planeswalker, drawing a card before randomly discarding one from his hand. It's Niv-Mizzet, and Joey then passes. Felix draws and has to move immediately to his discard phase, pitching a card. Miguel plays a Forest, Uptaking his expedition's quest counters, and Miguel then casts an Ogre Battle Driver. He moves to combat, and hits Tybalt for two with a Reclamation Sage, and passes. I gain two life with the tower for my upkeep trigger, and draw. 
I simply play a Swamp and pass. Joey casts Sahili, Sublime Artificer in his main phase and gains another life from the beacon. He upticks Tybalt, drawing another card and then randomly discarding Sarkin the Masterless. He passes turn. Felix plays an Illusionist Bracers and passes. Miguel plays a Forest, gaining his third quest counter and then casts his Commander. With his commander on the stack, I use one of the few black counter spells in the game, Withering Boon, and lose 3 life as I counter his creature spell. He then sacrifices the expedition since he'll need those lands to help recast his commander. Miguel then heads to combat and takes out Tybalt, and then passes. I gain 1 life as I sit atop my ivory tower and draw for turn. I play a Nevenyal's Disc and pass. Joey plays a Mountain for turn and plays another Planeswalker in his main phase. This time it's Ral Zarek, and he down takes the Walker by 2 to basically cast Lightning Bolt on Miguel's Ogre Battle Driver. He then passes to Felix. Felix draws and plays a Snow Covered Forest. We also realize at this point that Joey should have a Thopter from casting a Planeswalker with Sahili out. Miguel draws and has enough to recast Omnath in his main phase, and he then plays a Mountain. This triggers his commander's landfall ability, making him a 5-5 elemental token. Moving to combat, Miguel then swings the Rex Sage at Sahili, and Joey lets her go. I gain one on my upkeep from the tower, and then cast Beseech the Queen. I go to my library and find a card revealing Liliana of the Dark Realms and put her to hand. Joey draws and plays out Reigns of Power, swapping his one lonely Thopter for all of Miguel's creatures, which is a sweet deal. He then hits to combat, swinging the team at Miguel, who decides to block Omnath with a Thopter token. He then takes 7 from the unblocked creatures, and in Joey's second main phase, he upticks Ral Zarek, tapping down Miguel's mountain and untapping his interplanar beacon. He then passes, returning the stolen creatures to Miguel. Felix draws and plays at a Dragon Scarred Bears in his main phase, and he passes turn. Miguel untaps and draws. He casts Fervor and plays a Force as his land drop, making another 5-5 elemental, now with haste. He heads to combat, dealing 17 to Joey for stealing his creatures, and passes. At the end of turn, I think about blowing up the board, but Joey suggests I wait until his turn for some sneaky tricks. I gain 2 on my upkeep and play out Nurborg as my land drop. I'm then able to cast the Liliana of the Dark Realms and leave that very important one mana open for the disc. I then uptick my walker to find a swamp and pass. Joey floats a mana and then upticks Raoul, untapping his land and tapping the Dragon Scarred Bearer. He then taps the beacon once more and uses the two mana to activate his Isochron Scepter, casting Mystical Tutor and going to his library. He reveals Dig Through Time, putting it on top, and passes to Felix. Felix draws and plays another snow-covered force for his land drop. Four mana is then tapped for a harmonize and he gets to draw some cards. Moving to combat, he lets Miguel know he didn't appreciate having his land drop destroyed by hitting Miguel for three with the Dragon's Card Bear. He then passes, discarding down to seven. Miguel draws and casts a Mind Stone. He activates it, sacrificing it to draw a card. That card's a forest, which he plays for turn and makes another elemental token. Moving to combat, Miguel swings the team at Felix, but Joey has a response, casting Polymorphous Chest. This turns Miguel's creatures into 1-1 blue frogs with no abilities, and Felix then takes 5, one of which is commander damage. I decide not to capitalize on this at this point, and instead hope that Miguel will attack his other opponents before coming at me by doing so. I gain 2 from my tower on my upkeep, and draw. I play a swamp for turn, and uptick Liliana to find a replacement swamp for my hand. I then pay 4 mana for Erebos, shutting off all that rampant life gain happening in this game. Oh wait, that's just me. I pass turn. Joey delves away most of his graveyard to cast Dig Through Time and look at his top 7. He keeps his two preferred cards, which are hopefully lands. Joey then activates Ral Zarek, picking to tap my disc and untap one of his lands. I decide not to activate it in response, and Joey then passes. Felix plays a forest, but is it enough this late in the game? He then pays for Vernal Bloom, which unfortunately will help Miguel out, but he needs to get back into it, 
and he passes turn. Miguel draws and plays Arbor Elf and heads to combat. He taps everything sideways at Joey, putting him to three life once they connect. He then passes turn, and at the end of turn, I activate Erebos, losing two life and drawing a card. I gain four life on my upkeep and draw for turn. I play a swamp and then uptick Liliana to go and find another swamp for my hand. I then lose two life by casting Knight's Whisper and drawing two cards, and then I pass to Joey, discarding down to seven. Joey draws and has to pass. Felix plays a tapped Orin Reef as his land for turn, and then needs only tap two forests to make the four mana needed to recast Ayula. He then puts a Branchwood Armor onto his commander, which gives her plus four plus four, and he passes to Miguel. Miguel draws and plays where Ancients tread, sadly a few turns too late. He does however swing the elves at Joey, five damage at Liliana, and the rest at Felix. Before moving to blocks, Joey, as always, has an answer and casts Illusionist Gambit. It resolves, effectively ending this combat step, and we move to a second one where Miguel has to attack with everything, only this time, none of it's headed at Joey. Miguel then untaps, and this time he sends his elves at Liliana, and all the elementals at Felix. I cast Go for the Throat on the Reclamation Sage, which has Liliana only taking one in the end. Felix blocks Omnath with Ayula, and puts his bear in front of the elemental, paying to regenerate it. He still takes 10 from two unblocked elementals. In his post-combat main phase, Miguel then recasts Omnath, who comes in and takes out Joey with the trigger from where Ancients tread, and Miguel then passes. I gain three on my upkeep, and draw. I uptick Liliana, but then forget to go and find a land, and instead drop Nykthos, and pass. Felix draws for turn, and casts Panharmonicon. We then see a river bear hitting the field, which has Ayula triggering twice thanks to the Panharmonicon. Felix has Ayula gain two plus one plus one counters, and then has her fight Omnath. Obviously she wins. Felix then casts Regrowth, returning Harmonize to his hand, and goes to combat. He goes all in at Miguel, who just has to take the hit, eight of which is commander damage. Miguel casts Omnath again in his main phase, dealing the damage from where Ancients treads to Felix. He follows up with a Springbloom Druid, who sacrifices a land as it enters. This lets him go and grab two more basics from his library, and puts them out tapped. This triggers Omnath's landfall ability twice, making him two more 5-5 elemental tokens. It also gives him two triggers from the Where Ancients Tread, and he deals the 10 to Felix. Moving to combat, Omnath heads at me, the elves at Liliana, and the elemental tokens at Felix. Before damage, I use Nykthos to make enough mana to cast Silence the Believers, and use the Strive cost once, exiling the two elves. Felix then gets taken out by the elementals, and I take five from Omnath. I draw for turn, and down tick Lillian of the Dark Realms, gaining her emblem. All of my swamps now tap for four black, and I then play a swamp and cast Lillian of S. I down tick her to find a card, and put it on top of my library. I then activate Erebos, losing two life to draw that very card. I then play out a Grey Merchant of Ashfidel, training Miguel for five while I gain five life. I tap some more for a Noxious Gear Hulk, who comes in and blows up Omnath, and I gain five more. I then pop Nevernal's Disc, and I pass once the board's been wiped. Miguel draws a land, and asks if I have a finisher. I say yes, and he scoops it up as I reveal Exsanguinate in my hand. Game review time. So unfortunately for Joey and Felix, they both seem to get a little bit far behind in terms of lands, and Miguel certainly didn't help Felix in that matter. I'm not going to try and dump on Miguel, but I really think using Acidic Slime that early and on a land was really not the right move. By mid-game there were tons of better targets to be able to use it on, and it seemed a little bit impulsive. I think I also did a pretty good job of being able to fly under people's radar by only just gaining a little bit of life and finding one land per turn and doing nothing more. I do wish we'd seen more of Joey's deck, because I think Is It Planeswalkers is something that I don't see very often, and it could have a lot of potential. Had he been able to hit his land drops, I think Sarkin the Masterless could have been a real threat in his deck by turning his other Planeswalkers into giant flying dragon beaters.